Brain death occurs when there is a severe brain injury associated with excessive elevation of intracranial pressure. This is typically due to trauma, intracranial hemorrhage, stroke or severe hypoxic injury. Whatever the initial cause of the injury, the brain swells in response and this can compromise the blood supply into the brain. This can trigger progressive injury to the brain and lead to more swelling which in turn further impairs the blood supply, leading to a vicious cycle. Ultimately, the whole brain infarcts because no blood can flow into it. The pressure is so high. The brain is dead and undergoes aseptic necrosis, ultimately becoming liquefied. Doctors can do many things to prevent this from happening. Neurosurgeons can attempt to relieve pressure by drilling burr holes to drain subdural and extradural hematomas or by performing decompressive craniectomies. If there is no safe way to relieve the pressure mechanically, Inserting pressure and oxygenation monitors directly into the brain tissue can help guide medical therapy to lower the intracranial pressure. Doctors can even maintain higher than normal blood pressures in an attempt to keep the brain perfused. The body actually attempts to do this itself in the last moments. The Cushing's reflex is often observed in head injured patients. The pressure within the skull can get so high that the brainstem is squashed through the base of the skull. This pressure on the brainstem triggers a decreased heart rate, irregular breathing, and a markedly increased blood pressure, the body's final attempt to maintain perfusion to the brain. The process of the brain herniating downwards is called coning. When this is seen on CT scan, it signifies a very poor outcome. On a normal CT scan, you can actually see space around the brain, while in cases of herniation, there's no room at all. After herniation of the brainstem, the patient's blood pressure can fall dramatically as the central drive to raise the blood pressure is lost. If the patient is not actively supported at this point, complete cardiovascular collapse can follow. Sometimes brain damage can be partially halted. When the cerebral cortices are lost but brainstem function remains, this results in a vegetative state. There is no consciousness or awareness but autonomic function of the brainstem remains. If this state goes on longer than three months, it is termed persistent vegetative state. Patients require artificial feeding, but can typically breathe unaided and have preserved sleep-wake cycle. Locked-in syndrome is the opposite. A part of the brainstem is damaged, resulting in complete loss of motor and sensory activity below the level of the brainstem. Patients are quadriplegic and unable to speak. But the cerebral cortex is intact, so these patients are conscious and can interact with their environment. The book, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, was written by Jean-Dominique Bobby by blinking his left eyelid. Each word took two minutes to communicate, using a method known as partner-assisted scanning, where a transcriber repeatedly recited a French language frequency-ordered alphabet until Bobby blinked to choose the next letter. To recap, brain death is a consequence of raised intracranial pressure that stops the blood flow into the brain and causes the brain to die. Brain death is distinct from persistent vegetative state and locked-in syndrome, where blood flow remains to some areas of the brain and some brain function remains.